السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی رسول اللہ و علی علیہ و صحاب اجمعین اما بعد مائی برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دا اسٹڈی آف دا سبجیکٹ دا اسٹیٹس آف دا صحابہ اینڈ دا امپورٹنس آف فالوئنگ دیئر میتھڈالوجی مائی برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز ٹوڈے سبجیکٹ از ڈیوائڈیڈ ان ٹو ٹو پارٹس دا فرسٹ پارٹ از آن دا اسٹیٹس آف دا صحابہ The second part is on the importance of following the methodology of the Sahaba. There are many misunderstandings and many misconceptions. On one extreme, we have some people who abuse the Sahaba, who say bad things about them, who even go to the extent of saying that after the death of the Prophet wasallam, the Sahaba became murtad. Allahu Musta'an. On the other hand, we find there are some people who makes sahaba the target of political commentary who comment on certain ikhtilaf among the sahaba in the later times and who come to certain conclusions and due to which there are destructive consequences as we will see today inshallah on the other hand there are people who say that the quran and the sunnah are sufficient for us we don't need anything else is it so and what does the quran and the sunnah teach us about the sahaba about their understanding about their methodology inshallah we will be exploring all of these subjects today we will start this section by looking at some verses of the quran along with the timeline and the period of time of the prophetic life that they are referring to we will be looking at about 13 years of the makkan period and around 10 years of the madinan period and certain verses of the quran which are pointing to certain time periods during this entire period of 23 years we start with the first verse This is in Surah Al Imran, Surah number three, verse number one sixty-four, and a similar message is mentioned in at least three other places in the Quran. Allah says in this verse, "Lakad man Allahu alal mu'minin." Indeed, Allah did a favor on the believers. Is baatha fihim Rasoola min an fusihim that Allah sent among them a messenger who is from among themselves. Yatlu alehim ayati, reciting to them. the verses of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yuzakkihim and purifying them wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab teaching them the book wal hikma and wisdom wa in kanu min qablu la fi dalalin mubin and before this they were in manifest error they were in clear misguidance my dear brothers and sisters in this verse of the quran allah has described his favor that he sent to the believers a messenger from among themselves and he has mentioned four things that the messenger of allah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did on a regular basis the first he recited the verses from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the first duty of the messenger the second by you zakkihim purifying them doing their tazkiyah doing their tarbiyah correcting them clarifying their misunderstandings correcting their beliefs correcting their actions by you zakkihim purifying them and who were these believers who got this benefit of getting the tarbiyah from none else other than the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam indeed these were the sahaba and allah has said further wa yuallimuhum alkitab teaching them the book prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is the explainer of the quran and he taught the book to whom to the sahaba you and i were not present there the sahaba were present they got training from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they got the explanation from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were present when the quran was being revealed they knew the circumstances in which the verses of the quran were revealed they were the ones who were asking questions and as an answer to their questions verses of the quran were sent down so frequently you will find yes alunaka they ask you about this and allah says qul tell them this and these were the people on the basis of their very lives what things we did the verses of the quran would be sent down to correct them by you zakkihim they were taught the book wal hikma and wisdom the wisdom that we find in the statements of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we find the fragrance of that same wisdom in the statements of the sahaba they learned this from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is the hikma imam ibn kathir says hikma ay as sunna hikma is the sunna because this is the way of wisdom among many ways the way of wisdom and which is the way of wisdom the way of the sunna so we see who are these people who got all of these benefits directly without any intermediary and they were indeed the sahaba now we read at the end of the verse allah says 
وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضُلَالِ مُبِينَ And they had been before this in manifest error. Before this, before this, they were in manifest error. Do we find the indication that the verse of the Quran is mentioning that before they were in manifest error, meaning now they are not in error. Now they are on guidance. Being guided by whom? None other than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We look at another verse. This is regarding the Hijrat, the migration of the Sahaba when they had to leave their very homes in support of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were tested and they passed. They were the ones who believed in him at a time when no one had believed. They were the ones who supported him when there was no one there to support him. They were the ones who sacrificed their very homes, their families, their businesses, their properties and migrated with him to Medina. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hashr, Surah 59, verses 89. Lil Fuqara'il Muhajirina Alladina Ukhriju min diyarihim wa amwalihim Yabtaguna fadla min Allahi wa ridwana There's a share for the poor among the Muhajirs who were removed, who were expelled from their homes, from their property. Yabtaguna fadla min Allahi wa ridwana Seeking the fadl of Allah, seeking the bounty of Allah and His pleasure. So we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the action outside that they left their homes, their properties and what was going on inside. What was inside? يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِدْوَانَ And Allah says وَيَنْسُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Helping Allah's deen, helping His Messenger أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ They are the ones who are truthful. They were truthful in their word, their lives and their actions and their sacrifice give a witness of their truthfulness. And Allah says, Ulaika homo sadiqoon. And then Allah says, Walladina tabawa uddar wal iman min qablihim. Those who had settled in Medina and had accepted iman before they came. Yuhibbuna man hajara ilayhim. They love those who migrated to them, the Ansar. They loved the Muhajireen. Who has given a witness of this? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself that He has given a witness of this love. Of the Ansar for the Muhajireen. Yuhibbuna man hajara ilayhim. They love those who have migrated to them. And they don't find any reluctance, any demand or want in their hearts, harja in their hearts regarding what they have been given. What the Muhajireen were given, the Ansar did not find that why they are being given, why we are not being given this. No, they did not have this kind of a hasad or a comparison. Rather, they loved them. They were happy for them. They got the status before Allah. They got certain things during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, especially after the conquest of Makkah. And they gave preference to them over themselves, even though they were themselves in need. Allah says that they were themselves in need, yet they gave preference to them over themselves. See, we find there are some people, they say, okay, I don't need this, you take it. You don't need this and you give this. This is one level, but there is a level which is mentioned in this verse that walau kana bihim khasasa, even though they were themselves in need. Who is giving this witness? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, Yu thiruna ala anfusim, this ithar, this giving preference to them for the sake of their iman, for the sake that these are the people who are supporting our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this was the attitude of the Ansar towards the Muhajireen. This was their attitude and we find they were ready to give half their property as the Prophet ﷺ had initially ordained during that period after Hijrah, they were ready to share things with them. And we see the beautiful incident recorded in Sahih Bukhari, where the Prophet ﷺ initially asked his families, is there anything to serve to the guest as dinner? And there was nothing in the house of the Prophet ﷺ. He got a refusal from all the houses. And this used to happen with him. As we find Abdullah ibn Abbas narrated, Yabitu layalian mutatabian tawian layajidun asha that continuously many nights would pass and the household of the Prophet ﷺ would not even have dinner to eat. But now we find that this guest was present and the Prophet ﷺ's homes did not have anything to serve the guest. So the Prophet ﷺ asked his companions, Who among you will take care of my guest? And Abu Talha Ansari, an, he got ready. He said, Yes, Rasulullah, I will serve this guest. He took the guest. He reached his home. When he said to his wife that I have the guest of the Prophet ﷺ, what do we have that we can serve him? 
She said, there's no food at home. There's only little bit food, which is only sufficient for our children. So he said, we will put our children to sleep. Let them play and then sleep without eating food. And when the time for serving food comes at that time, accidentally, we will switch off the light so that we will put all the food in his plate and there will be no food in your and my plate. There will be no food in the plate of Abu Talha Radilam. And all the food will be given to the guests because that much will be sufficient only for the guests. And they did not want that they share that food and divide that little bit food among themselves. And he will be embarrassed if he sees that they are not eating and he's eating all the food. So they decided this plan. They did the same according to the plan successfully. The guests didn't come to know. He ate food nicely and he departed. And the next day, when Abu Talha Radulam met the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is amazed by what you did yesterday with the guests. And this verse of the Quran, was revealed at that time in this particular context. My brothers and sisters, we have the beautiful example of Abu Talha Radulam who was trying to conceal this matter. They had switched off the light. They had arranged things. Imagine what they were trying to conceal. They didn't want anyone to know. We find that the Prophet ﷺ was told through Wahi and it has come on record. Now we also know this matter that what did Abu Talha and his wife, who was a very cooperative lady, a sacrificing lady, a lady with Iman and supporting her husband did on that particular night. This is known to all of us. It has been declared. There's a verse of the Quran which was revealed in that very context. And then Allah says in the Quran, Whoever is saved from the greed of his soul, he is the one who is successful. So my brothers and sisters, we find in this verse of the Quran, which will be read right till before the day of judgment, about the status of the Sahaba, they are sacrificed, they are leaving their homes, they are supporting the Prophet, they are being from the Sadiqun. We find all of this, the Muhajirs, the Ansars, the Ansars giving preference to the Muhajirin, the love they had for them, the support they had for the cause. We will be reading this and this is part of the status of the Sahaba. We go ahead to a test that Allah took of the Sahaba. This was in the second year after Hijrah. We find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Baqarah, Surah 2, verse 143. Allah says, Wama I did not make the Qibla on which you were earlier illa lina alama, except that I may know, meaning I may test. Rasul, ala who is it who follows the messenger and who is it who turns on his heels? And Allah says further, وَإِنْ كَانَتْ لَكَ بِيرَةً إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِينَ هَدَ اللَّهُ This was indeed a big test. لَكَ بِيرَةً It was indeed a big test except for those who are guided by Allah. Same thing again. We find in this verse a testimony about the guidance of the Sahaba. They were tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they passed in flying colors. Imagine the Qibla being changed. Imagine what a big test. That earlier the Qibla was Baitul Maqdis, the Qibla was changed all the way to Masjid al Haram. And Allah says that indeed this was a big test except for those whom Allah has guided. And we find that the Sahaba passed the test, proving that they were from those who are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them and they passed with flying colors. We find it is recorded in Sahih Bukhari, the companion of the Prophet, Bara bin Azib, Radil Anhu, he narrates. That 16 or 17 months had passed since they migrated to Medina. They were praying towards Baitul Maqdis five times a day. And then one day, suddenly, without any pre-warning, the Qibla was changed. And in that very Salah itself, we have the example of the people who were praying in Masjid Qiblatan, where during Salah itself, when they got the testimony that the Qibla has been changed, they changed the Qibla within Salah itself. This was the state of Iman. It was not that we will think about it from tomorrow, okay, from coming Friday, we will change. No, the way Salah, in fact, during Salah itself, for certain people, when the Qibla was changed, they changed during Salah itself. It was the command of the Prophet ﷺ. It has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had believed in Allah. They had believed in the Messenger of Allah. They had sacrificed their homes. They have come here for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were ready to give any sacrifice. 
for Allah's deen and they were ready to accept Allah's command. They were of those who were sami'na wa ta'na. We hear and we obey. And they obeyed Allah's Messenger Sallallahu And as Allah says, وَإِنْ كَانَتْ لَكَبِيرَةً إِلَّا لَلَّذِينَ هَذَ اللَّهُ It was indeed a big test except for those whom Allah has guided. Indeed, the Sahaba were of those who were guided by Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is testified in the verse of the Quran. In the timeline, we now come to the year 6 Hijri when the incident of Hudaybiyah, the treaty of Hudaybiyah took place. What had happened at that time? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu got a dream that he along with his companions has gone for Umrah and is in the state of Ihram and performing Umrah. A dream of the Prophet is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu was ready. These were times when the Muslims in Medina were at war continuously with the Meccan Mushriks. In this situation, going for a peaceful pilgrimage may be tolerated by the Mushriks of Makkah, may not be tolerated by the Mushriks of Makkah. The Sahaba were with the Prophet ﷺ. We have a hadith in Sahih Bukhari narrated from Sayyid ibn Masayyib who narrated that there were 1500 Sahaba who went along with the Prophet ﷺ for this pilgrimage which finally resulted in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Now when the Prophet ﷺ went with the Sahaba, they finally camped at a location called Hudaybiyah. When they were at that location, there were some difficulties. The Mushriks of Makkah were not ready to allow the Muslims to come for this peaceful pilgrimage. The Muslims were not carrying the weapons of war. They were merely carrying just a sheathed sword, a covered sword for emergencies. They were not carrying weapons of war and they were not there for a war. They were there only for peacefully doing a pilgrimage and going back. The mushriks were not ready to allow. Prophet Muhammad sent Usman as his ambassador to talk with the mushriks. Time passed and rumors emerged that Usman has been killed. At that time, the Prophet took bath, the oath of fealty from the Sahaba at that very location in Hudaybiyah under a tree where he took bayah from them, this oath from them, that in this given very situation, we will be ready to fight until the last drop of blood. And the Sahaba were ready and there and present with the Prophet ﷺ. They were not going to desert him. They were there with him. And Allah has mentioned this incident in the Quran. And we read this verse. Allah says in Surah Fat, Surah 48, verses 18 and 19. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah is pleased with the believers. Is you buy tahta shajarati, who took the oath of fealty under the tree. These believers, 1500 Muslims, the Sahaba, who were there with the Prophet, ﷺ, firstly for this journey, secondly, in adverse circumstances, they did not betray him, they did not leave him, they were not bothered about their lives, they were there for a cause. And when the Mushriks of Makkah saw their firm determination, saw their support and love, they softened their stand. They allowed, but next year. They said, you come back next year. Today you go back. This time you go back. It looked like an apparent humiliation, but it turned out to be a peace treaty between the Mushriks of Makkah and the Muslims, which finally helped in conveying the message of Islam to these people. And finally, they accepted Islam until the Muslims reached a position of strength. And finally, it led to the fat, the victory, which was in 8 Hijri, where Makkah was finally conquered in a very peaceful manner without a fight. But the foundation of that conquest was based on this treaty. And this treaty was based on the firm support of the Sahaba who did not betray the Prophet wasallam. They stood with him. The Mushriks of Makkah saw their determination and they were ready for a treaty. So Allah has said, Allah is pleased with these believers. Allah is pleased with them. If you buy tahta shajarati, when they took the oath of fealty under the tree, then Allah says, for Alima Mafi Kulubihim. Allah knew what was in their hearts. What was in their hearts? Allah knew. Allah was pleased with them, not only based on their external actions, with complete knowledge of what is in their hearts. Allah is pleased with them. And then Allah says, Fanzala Sakina Talehim. Allah sent down sukoon and tranquility upon them. They were not excited and disobedient to the Prophet even when they saw that the terms for which the Prophet ﷺ agreed were apparently humiliating which turned out to be victorious in the final understanding of the subject. And then Allah says, وَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا And Allah rewarded them an imminent conquest. 
a conquest which came to them was based on this treaty. My brothers and sisters, there are people today who speak bad things about these people. They abuse these people. They say bad things. They call these people kafir. They say they became murtad after the death of the Prophet Please look at this verse of the Quran. Allah has said, Laqad radiyallahu anil mu'mineen. Allah is pleased with them. Are we going to say that Allah doesn't know with whom he should be pleased with? Allah doesn't know what will happen in the future, that later they are going to become murtad. Don't be pleased with them. Allah Musan, people are wrong. Their understanding is wrong. Allah is truthful. Allah knows with whom he is pleased after knowing what is in their hearts. It was not that, that externally they are there with you and internally they are not with you. No, Allah knew. Allah knew what is in their hearts, my brothers and sisters. We look at a verse of the Quran which refers to a period after Fatih Makkah. And when we look at this verse, it's in Surah Fat, Surah 48, verse 29. Allah says, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Walladina mahu ashidda wal al kufar. Those who are with him, they are firm against the disbelievers. They are firm for the sake of Allah. And then Allah says, Ruha mahu bainahum. They are merciful among themselves. My brothers and sisters, if people are to tell you that these Sahaba had wogs in their heart, had animosity in their hearts for each other. What will you believe? Allah has said in this book, which is going to be recited in the Day of Judgment, they were merciful among themselves. Yes, they were merciful among themselves. And this is the truth. Then Allah says, You see them, Perform ruku and sajda, seeking the fadl of Allah, the bounty of Allah and his pleasure. Ruku and sajda, external action. Ya bitaguna fadla min Allahi wa ridwana. This is internal. Who knew? Allah knows. Allah is the one who knows the internal and the external. Allah knows what goes on inside. And Allah has testified in his book. Ya bitaguna fadla min Allahi wa ridwana. Their ruku and sajda was seeking the fadl of Allah and his pleasure. Then Allah says, you will see on their faces the marks of their prostration. It is due to their prostration they develop that humility. And that humility, the effect of that is seen on their faces. This is one of the explanations given by the Mufassirin about Then Allah said, This is the very example for them in the Torah, the Torah given to Musa alayhi salam. And their example in the Injil, we come to know that the Sahaba were mentioned in the Torah and the Injil, which was sent down to Musa -Islam and Isa -Islam. The way Muhammad was prophesied in the previous books, these companions of the Prophet, -Islam, their prophecy was also there in the previous books, right from the Torah to the Injil. What is the example in the Injil? in Is that of a plant which gives out a stem. And this stem becomes stronger. Fastaglaza becomes fatter. Became stronger. The stem came out, it became stronger. It became fatter. Fastawala sokihi. And then it stood on its own trunk. The stem which came out. The stem which came out became bigger. Fastaglaza became fatter. Fastawala sukihi. It stood on its own trunk. Yo jibu zura. Allah says the sower is in marvel that this was just a seed. Now it has become a tree. Yo jibu zura. The one who sowed it, he is marveling at it. He is amazed at it. Then Allah says, Liagiza bihimul kufar. The kufar, the disbelievers. They are enraged on them. Meaning who are enraged on the Sahaba? Who are the people who feel very angry on the Sahaba? Who feel like talking badly about the Sahaba? Cursing the Sahaba? Who are these people? Allah says these are not believers. It is the kuffar. It is the disbelievers. Who are angry and enraged by the mention of the Sahaba. And Allah says. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَعَجْلًا عَزِيمًا Allah has promised those who believe and do righteous deeds among them forgiveness and a great reward. My brothers and sisters, this is a verse from Surah Fat which speaks about the Sahaba, their status, 
how they were with the Prophet Mahu, supported him, how they had wala wal bara in terms of their dealings with the kuffar, how they were the ones who had ruhama bainahum, merciful among themselves, how they were doing ruku and sajda, yabtaguna fadla min Allahi wa ridwana, seeking the fadl of Allah and seeking the pleasure of Allah, how they supported the Prophet how they came out as a small stem, how weak they were, how the stem finally became a tree and stood on its own trunk, and the Sahaba also became strong in terms of worldly presence and power. And Allah has said how on this the kuffar are angry and displeased and enraged. My brothers and sisters, these are only five verses that we have seen now about the status of the Sahaba. The first verse was about their position before Islam. How when min mubin, they were before this in manifest error. The second verse we saw about the hijrah, how they migrated, how they supported the Prophet The third verse is about the change of the Qibla. The fourth verse is about the support during Hudaybiyah. And the fifth verse is talking about the period of strength. And Allah says, bihimul kufar. My brothers and sisters, now we go ahead to look at some ahadith which talk about the status and support of the Sahaba and what we should do and what we should never do. Let's see this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, La tasubbu ashabi. Don't abuse my companions. For if one of you was to spend equal to the mountain of Uhud in gold. Gold meaning something very precious. Mountain of Uhud meaning huge quantity. If you spend equivalent to the mountain of Uhud in gold, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ma balaga mudda hadihim wala nasifa. You will not be able to reach the mud. Mud means two handful. What comes in this two handful? The mud. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, Ma balaga mudda hadihim wala nasifa. You will not be able to reach and be equal to the mud which one of them spends. A mud. Two handful, what they spent in the way of Allah. Wala nasifa, not even a half. Not even one handful what they gave in the way of Allah. Even if you spend equivalent to the Mount Uhud in gold, you will not be able to equal one mud, nor half of it. How? We know, for example, there's a plant which is small and someone comes and takes care of it, puts water, gives it its needs at that time. And then when it becomes a big tree, then someone comes and puts some water. So obviously there's a difference. Obviously there's a difference. Who are we? Who are we? How can we comment on these people who believed in him and supported him at a time when it was most needed? In a hadith recorded by Imam Tabrani in Mojum al-Kabir, graded Hassan, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man sabba ashabi, whoever abuses my companions, for alayhi lanatullahi wal malaikati wal nasi ajma'een. On him is the curse of Allah. For alayhi lanatullahi wal malaikati and the angels. Wal nasi ajma'een and all of people. So my brothers and sisters, we should never do this. I'm going to explain a little ahead. What are the disastrous consequences of doing this? How is it so disastrous? We will come to it just in some time. But right now, let us understand. We should never do this abusing the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Who are we? What do we think ourselves to be to be able to comment on them? Who are we? What is our status? What is our position? Prophet Muhammad ﷺ warned us, Allah, On him is the curse of Allah, wal malaikati, wal nasi ajma'in, and the angels of Allah and all of people. Many people have a misunderstanding. They think that only 10 Sahaba got the good news of Jannah during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ. Yes, those 10, the Ashra and Mubashira, did get the glad tidings of Jannah during the lifetime of Prophet ﷺ. But this was in one single narration that these 10 names were mentioned. And indeed, these Sahaba have a special status and position. But there's no denying that other Sahaba also received glad tidings of the Prophet ﷺ during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ. You tell me, when Allah said, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah is pleased with them. Allah says, Radi Allahu anhum wa raduan. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. Aren't these glad tidings? And we find specifically there are so many other ahadith. Let's look at this particular hadith, which is about the status of the Muhajir Sahaba. The Prophet said, Inna fuqara al Muhajirina. Yad khulun al Jannah qabla agniyahim bi miqdari khamsi miyati sanatin. 
the poor muhajir sahaba will enter into jannah before the rich muhajir sahaba by the number of 500 years meaning 500 years before the rich muhajir sahaba these poor muhajir sahaba will enter into jannah 500 years before them but it also means all of them will enter into jannah all of these muhajir sahaba have received the glad tidings of jannah we find about the Ansar, the Prophet said, it's recorded in Sahih Bukhari, Ayatul Imani Hubbul Ansar. The sign of Iman is the love of the Ansar. Wa Ayatul Nifaqi Bugdul Ansar. And the sign of hypocrisy is to have wolves, hatred towards the Ansar. My brothers and sisters, now we come to the second section of today's program. And this is the importance of following the methodology of the Sahaba. My brothers and sisters, regarding looking at the Sahaba for inspiration, people are unanimous that yes, the Sahaba are inspiration for us. Which sacrifice did they not give for the sake of Islam? Which sacrifice? They sacrificed their money, they sacrificed their property, they even sacrificed their lives, they sacrificed their families. There are so many cases of what sacrifices they have not given for the sake of Islam, for the sake of making the message of Islam reach us for the sake of living lives as ideal companions, as ideal supporters, as ideal first community of believers. So indeed they were inspiration. But many people don't realize that yes, the Sahaba are inspiration. There's no doubt about this. The highest level of inspiration as an Ummati, as a follower of the Prophet But they are also guidance. How are the Sahaba a source of guidance for us? We will be looking at some verses of the Quran. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, Surah 2, verse 137. If they believe as you have believed, you the Sahaba as you have believed, then they are on guidance. If we notice the words which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used, Allah has not said Amanta as you, O Prophet. Amanta singular. As you have believed, O Prophet. If they believe as you have believed, then they are guided. Allah has not said this. Allah has said, Ma amantum, as you the Sahaba, amantum is plural. Who are these people? When the verse of the Quran is revealed, it is the Sahaba. Allah has said, if they believe as you have believed, then they are guided. So Allah has given the Iman of the Sahaba as the standard Iman to be able to check our Iman. Is our Iman like the Iman of the Sahaba? Faqadi tada then we are guided. If we are not according to the Iman of the Sahaba, we are lost. So has Allah told or not to look at the Sahaba as a sample and as a standard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We look at the second verse of the Quran, Surah Tawbah, Surah 9, verse 100. And my brothers and sisters, in this verse, Allah has said, was min al wal ansar. The first four runners from the Muhajireen, from the Ansar. And then Allah says, and those who followed them in the best way. Allah says, Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. Who? Three. The Muhajir, the Ansar and those who followed them in the best way. Now, are you and I from the Muhajir? No. Are we from the Ansar? No. But can we be from the third category? Please note the words which Allah SWT has used. It is very important. Those who follow them in the best way. My brothers and sisters, these are the people who were trained and their tarbiyah was done by none other than our beloved Prophet Muhammad They were the ones when the Quran was being revealed. Whose tatkiyah was done. So Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِسَانِ Those who follow them in the best way, رضي الله عنهم وردوان And then Allah says, وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي تَحْتَ هَلَ نَحَارِ Allah has prepared for them gardens under which rivers flow. خَالِدِينَ فِي هَابَدَى In which they will stay forever. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَزِيمِ This is the greatest victory, greatest attainment. So my brothers and sisters, I invite you that we should be from those who believe like the Sahaba believe, who should be وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِسَانِ And now we look at another third verse from the Quran. It's from Surah Nisa, Surah 4, verse number 115. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ رَسُولُ 
whoever opposes the messenger. Even after guidance has been made clear. If someone opposes the messenger even after knowing the correct way, he deliberately, knowingly, after understanding it, goes against the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa What will happen? We will see. But before that, Allah has mentioned a second thing in this verse. He follows a way other than the way of the believers. My brothers and sisters, the way of the believers. Who are these believers? When the Quran is being revealed, it is the Sahaba. And the verse mentions Sabil il Mu'minin. Sabil, singular. Sabil, it's not Subul. Subul is plural. Ways of the believers. No, no, no. It's way of the believer. Follows a way other than the way of the believers. It's referring to a way of the believers on which the first and the foremost are the Sahaba. The Tabayin went on the same way. The Tabi Tabayin went on the same way. The Fuqaha, the Muhaddithin, the Ulama, all of them, they followed on the same way. On the same way we have to follow. As we read in Surah 9 verse 100. So we follow them in the best way. We also follow Sabil il Mu'mineen. Now Allah says if someone opposes the messenger, leaves the path of the believers, then Allah says, Nuwallihi ma tawalla. I will turn him on the path that he chose. Wa nuslihi jahannam wa saat masira. And I will make him reach Jahannam and what an evil destination it is. You chose this path knowingly. You did not follow the way of the believers. It's so obvious. It's so clear. You did not follow the way of the believers. So Allah says the punishment of such a person is Nuwallihi ma tawalla. Allah will himself turn him on the wrong way. You selected this wrong way knowingly. You knowingly went against the way of the believers. Now Allah is going to make it look correct to you. It will look good to you. It will look nice to you. Nuwallihi ma tawalla. And then land him in Jahannam. His punishment is Jahannam. After being clear, yet he chose the wrong path. And part of making it clear is the Sabil il Mumini, the way of the believers. So clear. It's not just singular, one person. It's the way of the believers. You are after 1400 years. So what we have to do? We have to follow the way of the believers. My brothers and sisters, this is a third evidence of looking at the Sahaba for guidance. And which is the proposal from the Quran and the Sunnah? Which is the proposal of all the rightly guided people from all generations and times? And that is, we follow the Quran, we follow the Sunnah. And the Quran and the Sunnah have taught us that we should follow the Quran and the Sunnah as per the understanding of the believers who have passed before us. Sabil il Mu'mineen. The first and foremost among them are the Sahaba. Fa'in amanu, if you believe as these Sahaba have believed, faqadi tadaw, then you are guided. And Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ Those who follow them in the best way. And Allah has said in Surah Nisa, Surah 4, verse 115, If you follow a way other than that of the believers, so my brothers and sisters, don't fall in the trap of ourselves coming up with any understanding in the name of Islam, in the name of the Quran, in the name of the Sunnah. And we disregard the legacy given to us of 1400 years where we look at the way of the believers what did they work on? And we disregard that. So the Quran and the Sunnah have themselves taught us to look at the way of the believers, the way of the Sahaba and follow that way. And then only we will be rightly guided. We look at this hadith now. It is from Sahih Bukhari. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Khair ummati qarni. The best part of my ummah is my generation. Best part. Thumma ladheena yalunahum. Then those who are after them. Thumma ladheena yalunahum. Then those who are after them. These are the three best generations of Islam. And these three generations are referred as the Salaf. The word Salaf means previous generation, literally. It means the previous generation. Specifically, it refers to these three best generations of Islam. Opposite of Salaf is the Khalaf. Khalaf means the later generation, people following people from later times. So now we have the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba following the Prophet, the Tabi'in following the Sahaba, the Tabi'i Tabi'in following the Tabi'in. We have the Fuqaha, the Muhaddithin, the Ulama, all of them following them. This is Sabil il Mu'mineen, the way of the believers. And we also, all believers, have to follow this way. Some people say that, Hum rijalun wa nahnu rijal. They were men and we also men. 
they just coincidentally happen to be present at the time of the Prophet They believe in the Prophet. They are Muslims. We are also Muslims. Is it all a matter of coincidence? No. Allah chose these very people to be the companions of the Prophet They believed in him. They became the ideal first community of Muslims. They were the people who supported the Prophet who believed in him, who acted on Islam to such a degree that Allah made their Iman the sample Iman. My brothers and sisters, let us look at this hadith. It's a maqoof hadith from Abdullah ibn Masood anhu, who narrated as is recorded in Musnad Ahmad, Inna allaha nazara fi ibad. Allah saw towards the hearts of people. فَوَجَدَ قَلْبَ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم خَيْرَ قُلُوبِ الْإِبَادِ Allah found the heart of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to be the best of the slaves. From all the hearts of people, the heart of Muhammad وسلم, was the best. فَاسْتَفَاهُ لِنَفْسِهِ وَابْتَاثَهُ بِرِسَالَتِهِ Allah chose him for his message and sent him with his message for people as the messenger of Allah. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was chosen. Then further, ثُمَّ نَزَرَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْإِبَادِ بَعْدَ قَلْبِ مُحَمَّدٍ Then Allah looked at the hearts of people after the heart of Muhammad فَوَجَدَ قُلُوبَ أَصْحَابِهِ خَيْرَ قُلُوبِ الْإِبَادِ Allah found the hearts of the companions of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم to be the best of the hearts. From all the people, you and I included, the best of the hearts were the hearts of the Sahaba. فَجَعَلَهُمْ وُزَرَاءً نَبِيِّهِ يُقَاتِلُونَ عَلَى دِينِهِ So Allah made them his ministers, his supporters, fighting along with him for the sake of his religion, for the sake of the truth. فَمَا رَعَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ حَسَنًا فَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ حَسَنًا Whatever these Muslims, what they consider to be good, it is also good before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا رَعَ سَيِّئًا فَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ سَيِّئُونَ And whatever these Muslims regard as say, as evil, it is before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also evil and bad. My brothers and sisters, this is the status of the Sahaba. It is no wonder that the Prophet ﷺ said, as is recorded in Sunan Tirmidhi, he said, ummati ala wa milla. My ummah will be divided into 73 sects. Kulluhum finnar. All of these will go in the fire of hell. Illa millata wahida. Except one group. The Sahaba said, وَمَنْ هِيَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O Messenger of Allah, which group is this? And the Prophet ﷺ said, قَالَ مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِ It is the one on which I am and my Sahaba are. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? My Ummah is going to be divided into 73 groups. كُلُّهُمْ فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا مِلَّةَ وَاحِدًا وَمَنْ هِيَا مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِ It is the one on which I am and my Sahaba are. So these Sahaba are the example, they are the ones Chosen by Allah SWT, they are the ones on the right methodology, right guidance, whom we should look at, we should follow their way, we will be safe. I want to share with you some examples of what happens when people leave the way of the Sahaba. Let us understand the whole concept. Islam comes to us from the Quran, from the Sunnah of the Prophet Now, is it that anyone can come up with any interpretation, any understanding in the name of Islam, Take any verse of the Quran, take any hadith, come up with any understanding in the name of Islam and say that I understood this. So no, you're not allowed to do this. We have come after 1400 years. The best of the generations have gone by. We will look at them and follow them. And if we don't do this, we can fall into any pit. Let's take two examples. We have the example of the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam, the so-called Muslim group from America, which even led the one million march to Washington. What did they do? They came up with the understanding that Islam is a pure black religion. And how did they do that? They misunderstood a verse of the Quran. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Taha, Surah 20, verse 102, where Allah says, Yawma yunfaqu fi suri, wa nashurul mujrimina yawma izin zurqa. On the day that the trumpet will be blown, Allah says, I will gather the criminals on that day, with their leery eyes. Zurqa. Now Zurqa literally means blue. What it means we come to know from the tafsir. That the mujrimin, the criminals will be in state of such fear. That their eyes will be like blurry. Now they said that Zurqa means blue. Who are the people with blue eyes? It is the whites. And these are the mujrimin. And they are the ones who will be in trouble. 
How did they come up with this kind of understanding in the name of Islam? It is only because they did not have as their rule, they have to follow the Quran and the Sunnah according to the Sabil al muminin according to how the Sahaba understood. We have another second example, a very recent example. There was a video which was very viral recently about evolution, saying that the Quran confirms evolution. I'm not mentioning the channel, I'm not mentioning the speaker, but it was sad to see somebody doing this in the name of Islam and being followed by certain intellectual speakers who adopted this as a position. What did they do? On the basis of Surah Teen, they have come to an understanding that the father of Adam salam was a monkey. That the father of Adam al-Islam was an ape. They say the fathers and the forefathers of Adam al-Islam were all apes. And apes through evolution became human beings. The first human being was Adam. And absolutely, this is gymnastics. It is nowhere there in the verse of the Quran. It is far-fetched, not even far-fetched. It's absolutely imaginary. It is just trying to make it in confirmation to modern science, which has right now taken a position which is faulty and wrong. We don't believe in this as regards Adam alayhi salam. Now, my brothers and sisters, this is what can happen when people don't tie themselves to the understanding of the Sahaba. We look at so many issues. Did the Sahaba do shirk? We find people in this ummah doing shirk. How? They have left Sabil al mumini Did the Sahaba follow innovations? Did the Sahaba follow bidas and religion? We have people following bidas. Why? They left the Sabil al mumini did the Sahaba make it mandatory that you have to follow so and so and never even if there is a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, you don't leave the statements of so and so scholar of ours. Did they have this kind of an understanding? No. On the contrary, we find the Sahaba the most willing, the most ready to submit and surrender their opinions when a statement from the Prophet ﷺ came. So my brothers and sisters, this is the safety belt which ensures that we walk on the right way, we don't miss the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to follow the Sabil al muminin Now when these people, the people whom we find today, they come and make comments on the Sahaba. They try to criticize the Sahaba. Yes, there have been certain wars even among the Sahaba later. But we don't blame any of the two sides. We don't make it a topic of political commentary. Yes, there is a hadith. In Sahih Bukhari, إِذَا حَكَمَ الْحَكِمْ فَجْتَحْدَ ثُمَّ صَابَ فَلَهُ وَجْرًا وَإِذَا حَكَمَ فَجْتَحْدَ ثُمَّ أَخْتَى فَلَهُ وَجْرًا When a judge judges and he strives to his best according to the correct methodology, if he is right, he will get double reward. Even if he is wrong, he will get single reward. We say in all of those issues, somebody is getting double reward, somebody is getting single reward. Who are we to comment? Who are we? We are no ones. We were not there when the whole world was against the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu These are the people who were there. They are the ones about whom Allah has testified in the Quran. Radiyallahu anhu wa radwan. They are the ones whose iman has been made the standard iman. Fain amanu bi mithli ma amantum bi. They are the ones about whom Allah says, follow sabil al mumini Who are we to sit and comment on this? Then what happens? Allah wants us to be guided. Allah sent the Messenger of Allah. He also selected the Sahaba to support him and understand the deen from him and pass on the deen to us. Now, when we leave the Sahaba, anything can happen to our Islamic understanding. Lastly, my brothers and sisters, we conclude with the verse from the Quran. It's a dua from Surah Hashr, Surah number 59, verse number 10. Allah has taught us, Rabbana ghafir lana, O Allah, forgive us. Wali ikhwanina ladina sabakuna bil iman. And forgive our brothers who have preceded us in iman. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلَّ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And do not put in our hearts any hatred for those who have believed. رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَوْفُ الرَّحِيمُ O our Lord, indeed, you are the compassionate, you are the merciful. My brothers and sisters, let us love the Sahaba. This is part of our Iman. Let us have correct understanding towards them. Let us follow their way. Let us follow the Quran. Let us follow the Sunnah. As per the understanding of the Sahaba, and the Salaf of the Summah, may Allah make us of those who are guided and who guide others to the right way. Ameen. Wa akhru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. This series is sponsored by one of our brother in Islam for Sadqai Jariya of his family. 
ऐसे ही और वीडियोस बनाने में हमारी मदद करें